Hey, what's up? It's your boy again, Gary Hayward, the Corruption Officer, coming at you live with another um, video about my experience as a Correction Officer that became an inmate. Um, one of my experiences was I was contacted a couple of years ago by Jay-Z's uh, person, you know, his people, and to do a documentary, which he had collaborated with Mr. Harvey Weinstein, which unfortunately, you know, later on we found out about Harvey Weinstein and his doing, but that... That's not to take away of the documentary that him and Jay-Z did for this young man named Khalif Browder. Now, those of you who are not familiar with this young man, um, I'm here to re-familiarize you and bring his name out. So uh, rest in peace to this young man. I met him briefly during the filming, you know, right before we started filming for the documentary. And I could tell the young man was very traumatized from his ordeal of being incarcerated on Rikers Island for three years with no trial, no charges, no nothing, and then being, being let go and sent home. Uh, during his time there, he spent like 700 days out of the three years, he was incarcerated in solitary confinement. Now let me paint this picture about solitary confinement. You're locked in your cell, they slide your food through a little door, you're in there 22 hours a day. Right, you may get an hour out to go to some like like a, like a caged animal. You go into this little cage so you can breathe some fresh air and get a little bit of exercise in, and then you get to take a shower. Possibly you get to call your your people at home and make a phone call. But for the most part, it's 22 hours a day that you're locked in. It. When I became an inmate, they did the same thing to me. And when you're sitting in there for 22 hours out of the day, the walls closing on you. you, you have nothing but time to think about everything, and you can go crazy if mentally you're not strong. You can go crazy if you're not mentally strong. So can you imagine this young man at his young age locked in solitary confinement for three years, I mean for 700 days out of the three years, and then only to be let go and not convicted of doing any crime. So during my time at Rikers Island, I see that a lot of youth come through there and they're misguided. They they don't they don't understand the ramifications of what's going on with them. They don't understand they some of them think it's a game. Some some of them think it's a rite of passage, like, you know, I'm in jail, I'm gonna get out of here. When I get out of here, I'm gonna get my props from the street. I was incarcerated when I was incarcerated in solitary confinement. You know, uh, the cell was raised up about six six inches off the ground, and when you wanted to talk to another inmate, they called that the jack. So you would get on the floor and talk through this little space like this to 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 someone someone else. And um, there was a young man there that was sitting there, and he was banging on the door, banging on the, the table, banging on the floor rhyming and he had his new notebook next to him and everything and he was writing his rhymes down and he had plans on when he get out he's of course he's going to be a rapper so you know i encourage them hey follow your dreams don't never give up on your dreams and don't let jail uh define you you're a very young man you know when you get out pursue that so we would talk all the time and then you know in jail you never really ask somebody hold on you never really ask somebody why they incarcerate? So uh, later on, I found out that he was there and he was sentenced to 50 years to life. And I found out the way you know, jail is, is information is easy to find out. But when I found this out, I I just began to look at him because he still in it still didn't grasp, it still didn't sink in that. He had got this time, you know, and he's still writing his rhymes and he's still uh, somebody putting his head about an appeal, you know, after 10 years, you know, and, and I'm just one day in jail is an eternity. You got 50 to life, bro. And you you sitting here and you writing rhymes and you banging on as if you didn't have a care to care in the world. Now, I'm, I'm flipping back to Kali Broda. Um, 
the young man, he had to, to, to deal with a lot inside that prison. Not only him, it's, it's, it was a bunch of other young men that been through Rikers Island, that did time on Rikers Island only to be let go. And when they got let go, they was just happy, just happy that they was no charges. They wasn't worried about suing. They wasn't worried about coming back. They wasn't worried about, they was just happy that, listen, I'm out of there. I don't have to be in there. Now, we know that's not justice. We know that's not right. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? If you don't have the means of a family or anybody to ask questions, if you don't have means of somebody outside that care about you that's going to be like, yo, what's up? Y'all kept them in there all this time and y'all didn't do nothing. No charges, no nothing. So that in itself shows you how somebody can get lost in the system, show you how paperwork gets slipped under the table and you know, nothing is done about it. But that traumatizes people because this young man, after he got released, he couldn't cope. It messed him up. And, you know, like I said, rest in peace to him and uh, my condolences to him and his family uh, once again. And he, you know, he took his own life. He took his own life after that whole ordeal on Rikers Island. Now, I'm just going to say this. There are some people, yes, that deserve to be incarcerated. We know that. There's some people who don't deserve to be incarcerated. So when you look at the, the factors of who get convicted, who don't get convicted, who get to go home, who get to stay and stuff like that, but only to be let go as if you wasn't supposed to be there after all. You wasn't supposed to be locked up after all. That young boy wasn't supposed to be there. And how many other people you think that happened to? How many other people you think got locked up for bogus crimes, bogus charges, and sent to Rikers Island and sat there and went through because C-74 ain't no joke for adolescents these dudes think they, they Wolverine they think they're invisible, they get into fights and everything and they think it's like gladiator school, I remember one time working uh, in C-74 for a brief stint and I had a bunch of young men lined up and I had to do a count. So I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So by the time I got to 20 and I came back around, I didn't even hear it. The first out of the first 10 young men, one young man had a black eye and another young man had his shoes on and he had the other young man's shoes on. So I'm looking like, what happened? Just that quick, I'm doing the count. What happened just that quick? And he told me, he said, CEO, he had a black eye, swollen. I slipped in the shower. Now, we all know the slip in the shower routine is just letting you know I ain't telling. I'm not telling you what happened. I'm not going to let you know what happened to me. So I try to separate them, get him by himself. Maybe he'll open up and tell me. He kept to his guns, and I just had to send him to the clinic to make sure that he got medical attention. He didn't accuse nobody. He didn't point nobody out. And that's the way these kids are going by. They figured that they have to be tough. And you do. And you do. And they're not going to snitch. Uh, you know, I don't know if he planned on later on retaliating against this un un individual. But just like that, he got beat up and got his sneakers taken. These young men feel that they're invincible. They can't be hurt. And they got forever in a day. Like it's a playground. You know what I'm saying? I should witness these young men. Nobody, I don't, I'm not going to say they had a father figure or a family, but just etiquette in jail. They had to learn about etiquette in jail, about when a female CEO is present. I've seen incidents where female CEOs are present and they're sitting there and they, 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 the officer station is like this and there's a gate and they're talking to the young man. The young man is sitting there looking at the female CEO's lip because she had red glossy lipstick on. He's you know, playing with his private parts. But the, the thing is, because that happens in jail a lot, the thing is, right next to him, another young man is on the phone. Another young man is over here watching TV. They don't have a care in the world about none of that, about being private or secretive. And this is what happens when they transform to the atmosphere around them. So once again, I just want to bring it back to some of the stuff that Kylie Broder had to endure or face gangs, initiation, you're not a part of this one, slashings and all that stuff. 
for three years only not to be charged with nothing. With nothing. Like, once again, I just want to bring light, rest in peace, peace to Kali Broder, my condolences to his family. I just want to bring it up again so, so he's not forgotten. You know, uh, once again, um, I participated in the documentary by, that was produced by Jay-Z's people and, uh, you know, so if you get, if you don't know about this young man, take time, Google it, stream it, download it, check his story out, and just think about the hundreds of our youth, hundreds of our young men out there that go through this, that get, now, it's not going to be televised, they're not going to blow it up, of course, about the number of young men that get incarcerated and go home with no charges. None. No charges. So once again, my name is Gary Hayward. Stay tuned for more videos. Um, my experience as a correction officer slash inmate uh, sets the tone for my knowledge and the things that I went through as a correction officer and as an officer, uh, as an inmate. So if you want me to come speak to your kids, if you want me to do speaking engagements for anyone, just uh, contact me, inbox me, whatever. My Facebook is Gary Hayward, uh, Instagram, Gary Hayward Corruption Officer. You can contact me and I'll come speak. I'll even go to police academies, Correction Academy, and let them know the ramifications of what they do as an officer that can end them up in prison. Once again, Gary Hayward, hit that bell, hit that subscribe button, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'm out.